a lot of times we we would have to go into fields that were hot. Uh, probably the most memorable day of my flying in Vietnam was Friday the 13th, September 1968, the day before my birthday. Uh, got a mission to to go to Benoit, pick up uh, cargo and take it to Song B. Song B was a a dirt strip up near Song B Mountain and we had a artillery unit up there that I'd flown into Song B many times uh, and they had 175 millimeter cannons and 8 inch cannons there and I guess uh, Charlie had the mountain there at Song B, and uh, they were always firing those big guns into the Song B mountain up there. Uh, Song B at times uh, could get a little uh, touchy. Uh, the runway was a sort of a clay uh, strip. Uh, one C-131 day was taking off to the south, which went over the, the village of Song B, and someone shot him up with the machine gun. They think maybe even a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, he was low climbing out. He lost two engines. He made it back around and crash landed on the runway and and ran the airplane off the runway and the airplane was total. Uh, so at times they had got to where uh, they would have to have fighter cover before you could go into Song B. That particular day things had calmed down and they had reduced it back to where you had to have a forward air controller on station uh, to call in diverted fighters, you know, if needed. The co-pilot I have that day is his first trip in Vietnam, probably his first mission. <laughs> and he, I had been telling him, I want you to make sure you go through the checklist and, and we do everything, you know, but sometime I may go ahead and do it and you follow up on the checklist. So... This poor young guy, he, he'd been really at it, you know, all day. This was this guy's first trip. Uh, our first takeoff from uh, Tonsonute, we're climbing out and trying to get him to tune the radios and watching him and flying and everything. And... The flight engineer says, uh, helicopter, 12 o'clock. I look up and here's a flight of helicopter right in front of us. So I peel off to the left real quick. And I told him, I said, now, son, you got to learn to walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, you got to got to be able to keep your eyes out and do things in the cockpit at the same time. You know, here we both were looking at in here and I thank the, the engineer, and he said, that's all right, Major, my ass is along with you. And uh, so anyway, that's the way the day started. So we go over to Benoit. We, our cargo is uh, uh, cannon shells, 30,000 pounds of uh, high explosive cannon shells and their fuses. The, Loadmaster, uh, we had two loadmasters, and they got into a discussion to whether it was legal to haul uh, the high explosive ammo along with the uh, fuses, which normally you would not haul them on the same airplane in case you crashed or something. You know. But 
they had a letter from uh, the Air Division saying that uh, that had been waived for Vietnam. So we go ahead and take off. On the way up to uh, Song B, I called the uh, forward air controller on the radio. He said, well, I'm not there yet, but I'm only a couple of minutes out. He said, uh, go ahead and circle the base. If it looks all right, you know, uh, go ahead and land. So we land. And we shut down the two inboard engines to keep from blowing the guys as they offloaded the stuff. We, uh, the cargo was on pallets, and they brought forklift up behind the tail end, you know, and was offloading the, the ammo. And we looked down and hear puffs of smoke, dirt, off the end of the runway, and they're walking their way toward us, you know. And all of a sudden, the forward air controller calls and says, it's you they're shooting at. And uh, so we get on the intercom to the uh, loadmaster, get the airplane unloaded, we got to get out of here. And the navigator got out and got on the, the uh, cord outside for us to go ahead and start up the inboard engine. Uh, so we start number three and then number two and uh, they come back on board and the uh, the engineer comes clamoring up on the flight deck. He said, what's going on? <laughs> he said, we got mortars coming in. We're getting out of here. He said, well, I was down in the left wheel well checking the tires. <laughs> and so the engine start to start. <laughs> and I've got to, I've got the, the uh, fairing up on the wheel and I have to reach through and to get the pin back in, you know, to hook it back up. And you're starting the engine, and I ran through that prop as it was turning. I don't know how the prop missed him. But uh, we crank up and uh, taxi out to the opposite end of the field and take off and get on out of there. So we're headed back down to to Benoit for our next load wherever we were to go. We get called and we're diverted to uh, diverted to Ann K, I think was the name of the base, uh, to haul some, uh, God, I can't remember, anyway, to haul some army troops up to another base that's under attack. Uh, so we go down to Ankin. On the way down to NK, we were told, contact the uh, pilot on flight so-and-so. There was another C-130 down there, so I run over to him and say, I was supposed to contact you and get direction. He said, well, we're to, to go up in uh, the... Uh, Combat control team's call sign is uh, tailpipe 29 or whatever, and their frequency is so-and-so. So I write that down, you know, and, and we go back, and they load up 100 American troops on there, you know, and we take off and headed up this other base. God, I can't remember the name of it now. But uh, it was on an old rubber plantation. So uh, we get up there and we call and call and call, and get no answer, get no answer. Finally on the uh, guard frequency, which is the emergency frequency, someone said, so aircraft circling, what are your intentions? And uh, we told him we intended to land. So he said, okay, you're cleared to land to the south. The runway was a, a old dirt road and uh, so as we're flaring, getting ready to land, the Vietnamese rides a bicycle out in the middle of the runway, crossing the runway. And I added the power and we stagger around and, and come back around and, and land. And uh, we offload and, 
and I called the guy on the emergency frequency. I don't know who he was, some army guy. And he cleared us to take off. Alongside the runway were 105 howitzers. And their their barrels are smoking. <laughs> They're pointed out across the runway. And they had a heck of a firefight going on that day. Uh, so I called them and they said they would shut down the artillery. We were cleared to take off. We take off and we're headed back down to Anke to pick up another load. And I get a call and, and told to divert to, to uh, Tom Sadut. Get to Tom Sadut and they said, uh, the airplane that had the combat control team and a, low, and a forklift had maintenance problems and was there at Tom Sadut. So I was to take his load into, that was the guys I was supposed to be talking to back there to take him in. Well, they decided that uh, they were supposed to pull the combat control team out at dark and it was getting late in the day. So uh, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't send them up there. So they needed the forklift up there to move stuff around. So we take off with the forklift. We go back up and I call the guy on the emergency frequency and uh, get clearance to land. Come around and it's deja vu all over again. Here I am flaring to land. Some guy walks out in the runway. I said, I'm sorry, buddy, but you're dead meat. And about that time, a armored personnel carrier pulls out in the middle of the runway and I said, oh boy, no. So I copped it, staggered around, just missing the the uh, APC and came back around and, and landed. While we we're offloading the forklift, mortars start coming in from the rear. And the loadmaster says, we're getting mortared. So, like Don Handelsman said, that's the time, that ashtray, you wish you could crawl into it, you know. <laughs> There's no place to go, no foxhole, no bomb shelter or anything. Uh, we had turned around at the end of the runway to take off the opposite way we had landed. An Army helicopter had landed in, on the runway in front of us. So he and I both are screaming over the emergency frequency to the guy. The artillery is shooting across the runway. And uh, said, shut down the artillery and let us get out of here. Let us get out of here, you know. So the guy finally says, I'll shut down the artillery 45 seconds take off and make a left-hand turn. Well, a helicopter takes off. He makes a right-hand turn. I take off, make a left-hand turn, and say, boy, I'm glad to get out of that place. So we're headed back to Tonsonute, and we get a call, and they say, go pick up that forklift you just took in. We got to evacuate them before dark. And I said, man, what a day, okay. So I go back. They had uh, contacted the, the guy on emergency frequency again. He shut down the artillery. I come in, land, we load up the forklift and we take off uneventful. So. Here we are, headed back to Tonson. And I said, okay, uh, I haven't, you haven't had a chance to do much flying today, so I'll let you fly on the way back to Tonson. And I'll let you make a landing from the right seat. So here we are coming back, and it's uh, getting late in the day, starting to, not dark yet, but uh, we come in, he makes a, 
a nice landing and as we're rolling out the airplane starts violently shaking and I said I got it and I grabbed the nose wheel steering and I didn't know whether I had it or not we had a flat tire and uh, got it stopped on the runway and since it's starting to get dark and we're on the far runway I told the, the forklift the loadmaster, I said, go ahead and unload that forklift and tell him to get on the perimeter road so he can get around to the other side of the base before it gets dark. Because on that side of the base, old Charlie liked to take pot shots, you know, at night. So anyway, I call in and tell the tower that I uh, got a flat tire and we have the north runway closed. So... We're waiting there, and this big, funny-looking uh, machine shows up, you know, and it's to drag us off. The, I said, "Wait a minute, now, you try to drag this thing with a with a flat tire, and uh, you pull the nose gear out from the airplane." I said, "Just stand back." So I started up two engines and limped off the runway and got the airplane clear of the runway and then shut it down. Said, now you can send a tire change crew you know, out here, you know. I said, hooking on with that thing, you know, and, and dragging it, you would have probably ruined the airplane. But uh, that was the most memorable, memorable day.